Right, so today's lesson will be transfer of electrons at a distance. And this experiment or this reaction is often um, referred to as the YouTube experiment. Okay, not this YouTube, but um, this YouTube we're talking about a tube which is U-shaped. But before we can proceed with uh, anything, anything in detail for this reaction, okay, you must make sure that you have already mastered the conversion of Fe2 to Fe3 and the other way around. So let's do a simple recap. Let's do a, some recap before we actually um, continue on this YouTube experiment because we need to apply what we learned in the previous two lessons. Then only it will work well for this YouTube experiment. Okay, so previously we learned that the conversion of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus Okay, if Fe2 going to Fe3, it's oxidation reaction. It's oxidation reaction. So that means for this reaction to take place, we need oxidizing. We need oxidizing agent. Okay, so please recall back what are the examples of oxidizing agent. Okay, that we can use. So the examples of oxidizing agent, the easier one, we have chlorine water or bromine water. Okay, and we have the very famous acidified potassium manganate 7, KMnO4, all right? Acidified potassium manganate 7 and also acidified potassium dichromate 6 solution, all right? Okay, right? So these are examples of oxidizing agent that we can use, all right? Okay, then we also learn about the conversion of Fe3 back to Fe2, okay? So the conversion of Fe3 back to Fe2 is a reduction reaction. So for this reaction to take place, we can use, we can use reducing agent reducing agent so what are the examples of reducing agent that we can use okay the simple one are the uh, reactive metals such as magnesium okay or aluminium or zinc all right magnesium aluminium or zinc or we can also be using halides, halides, that means group 17 in the form of compound or in the form of ion, that is potassium iodide, okay, or potassium bromide, okay? Now, I'm not sure if you actually also realize something that is, during the conversion of Fe2 to Fe3, all right, Fe2 undergoes oxidation. If Fe2 undergoes oxidation, it also means it itself, it is, it is itself a reducing agent. So if I ask for any examples of reducing agent other than magnesium, aluminium, zinc, potassium bromide, and potassium iodide, I could also mention any solution that contains iron to ion, such as FeCl2, iron 2 chloride, or I can suggest iron 2 sulfate, FeSO4. So similarly, similarly, the conversion of Fe3 to Fe2 is a reduction reaction. And since Fe3 undergoes reduction, that means it itself is actually an oxidizing agent. Yeah, so that's why in my previous video, I told you Fe3 will need to react with a reducing agent because it itself is oxidizing agent, right? So I can have another suggestion for oxidizing agent here that is FeCl3 because it contains iron 3 or I can suggest iron 3 sulfate solution or any compound or any compound that has iron 3, all right? So now, first thing first, before we can proceed, please make sure you get your oxidizing agent and your reducing agent well, okay? Because in YouTube experiment, we are going to react 
any pair of oxidizing agent with reducing agent. Okay, now, what does the term transfer of electron at a distance mean? What does it mean? Somehow, the keyword here is about distance. It means now, I am going to carry out redox by distancing my two reactant. What do I mean by that? So I want you to imagine this reaction. I want you to imagine this reaction. Okay, right? Just want you to imagine this reaction. Say, now I have FeCl2. Since what I have now is a Fe2+, plus, okay, since now what I have is an Fe2+, plus, okay, that means I will have to convert it to Fe3+, plus, and to react with this, usually what I do is I will be adding oxidizing agent, let's say um, KMNO4. Okay, so my KMNO4 will then convert my Fe2 to my Fe3. So in this reaction, what happened? Okay, this is an oxidizing agent. Okay, it reduced with iron 2, iron 2, which is a reducing agent. So this is the thing. During a redox reaction, okay, it makes sense that if I am a reducing agent, then I will react with oxidizing agent or the other way around. And for all the reactions that we have so far studied, during the reaction, your reducing agent and your oxidizing agent, they are always in contact with one another. That means when these two reactants react, I make sure I pour one to another. Okay, so they're in close contact. So when these two are in close contact, somehow one person donate electron and another person gain electron, then redox reaction take place. So, my question now to you is, if I have an oxidizing agent and I have a reducing agent, I want them to react, but I actually do not let them have direct contact by pouring one to another. Can reaction take place or can reaction not take place? Okay, the answer is yes. The reaction will still be able to take place even your oxidizing agent and reducing agent are not in direct contact with one another and how okay yes by using a youtube by using a youtube okay so how first thing first you need to learn how to draw a youtube ah okay guys how you draw a youtube very simple please draw 11 that is very far apart, okay? 11, two straight lines. Then join the two straight lines by a curve, concave shape, lah, huh? concave line at the bottom. And then repeat another pair of straight line on the outside of the original one. Then join with another concave line. So you look at this. This is a tube that looks like U-shape, so we call this a U-tube, okay? So I can see now the U-tube somehow has two opening, right? It has two opening, okay? Because it has two opening, it allows me to pour my oxidizing agent on one part and reducing agent on another part. And I will be separating my oxidizing agent from my reducing agent with a salt bridge. Okay, what is the meaning of salt bridge? It's any salt solution. So for this salt bridge in the exam when you label, please do not label salt bridge, okay? I'm just telling you that this could be a salt bridge and you should label it by giving specific names of salt bridge. So what can you use as salt bridge? A lot. You can use sodium chloride solution or you can use any acid such as hydrochloric acid Okay, sulfuric acid solution or even nitric acid solution. Alright, so any, alright, any salt bridge, any acid or any soluble 
salt solution. Okay, so what happened? Now, when I pour in salt bridge into the YouTube until it is half full, I am going to now pour in any oxidizing agent on my left hand side. All right, so for oxidizing agent, okay, I'm going to choose chlorine. So I will pour in chlorine, okay? Okay, chlorine water. Okay, so this is my oxidizing agent, yeah? So since I have already poured in um, oxidizing agent on the left-hand side, so on my right-hand side, I'm going to pour in my reducing agent. So for reducing agent, okay, I want to use Ki potassium iodide. Okay, yeah? Ki solution and it is my reducing agent. It is not always oxidizing agent on the left. Okay, you can do the other way around. It doesn't matter left or right. Okay, as long as it's a pair of oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Okay, so now reaction will not take place yet because somehow the setup is not complete. So how do you set up completely the whole apparatus? Okay. Now, what you need to do is, you need to have electrode, carbon electrode, okay? Carbon electrode, huh? and immerse your carbon electrode into both solution. Two different electrode, each electrode immerse to the oxidizing agent and reducing agent, and then join the two electrodes, join the two electrodes to a galvanometer by using connecting wire. And last but not least, you complete the drawing by drawing a stopper. So it shows that your stopper is holding the electrode. Okay. Okay. Right. So this is a complete setup of how you are going to carry out redox reaction or transfer of electrons at a distance. Okay, now what will happen? What will happen during this reaction? Very simple. Chlorine water is an oxidizing agent. So that means is it going to undergo oxidation or reduction? Yes, the answer is reduction. Huh? Okay, reduction is will be undergo by oxidizing agent. So I'm going to write half equation for my chlorine. Okay, okay, chlorine only Cl or Cl minus. Huh? If I begin with chlorine, then the other side I will have to write Cl minus. Huh? Okay, so which side is more positive? Left hand side more positive, right? So electron this side. Two and two chloride. Okay, so what will I be observing? What will I be observing in this reaction? Originally, chlorine is somehow a greenish yellow solution, but it will end up becoming a colorless solution. Okay, please refer back to the color of halogen and halides in my previous video if you have forgotten. Okay, next, look at my potassium iodide. It is the reducing agent, right? Okay, so if it's a reducing agent, it will undergo oxidation. Okay, so remember for this chapter, every time you see potassium or sodium, you can just ignore. Okay, just focus on the iodide. So here I have iodine in the compound, means it's iodide. Okay, after the reaction, it's going to become iodine. So this time around, electron will be on the right hand side, the product side. Okay, and then diatomic, so everything double up. Okay, and what will I see? What will I see at this part? Iodide originally is colorless. Okay, all halides are colorless. All halide solutions are colorless. But when you form a compound, it's going to be brown color. Okay, right? So what question will usually ask you? They will ask you to draw set up of apparatus for this YouTube experiment. Okay, <laughs> my nephew is shouting. And then, they will ask you to write oxidation and also reduction half equation and also observation. So observation, I have already, um, I have already uh, written it down. Lah, huh? Okay, for iodide, the color go from colorless to brown. For chlorine, the colors go from greenish yellow to colorless. Okay, last but not least, okay, I have one last observation. I have one last observation. 
okay? That is, I will see that the needle of the galvanometer will actually deflect. Okay, the needle of galvanometer will deflect. That means it produces electricity. That means this reaction produces electricity. Why? All right, now you look at my half equation. If you look at chlorine, Cl2 plus 2E, from this equation, somehow it tells me chlorine gain electrons. Okay, so during this reaction, chlorine gain electron means, oh, electron is flowing into the chlorine and then the chlorine gains it. But where do the electrons come from? Must be someone willing to donate, right? Okay, you look at your iodide reaction equation. Electron is now on the right-hand side. It means now it loses electron. So in this reaction, basically, the iodide loses electron. You see, it gives electron. You see, iodide gives electron. So the electrons given by iodide is actually accepted by the chlorine. So from this reaction, my iodide gives electrons and the electron will flow to the chlorine and then the chlorine gain the electrons. Okay, so if question asks me to mark the direction of electron flow, this is how I mark from Ra to Oa. Clear? And because of that, I will have an additional observation which is on my galvanometer. So what will be the observation is that the needle of my galvanometer, oh sorry, needle of galvanometer deflect okay so that's all for today's lesson and to summarize it okay our lesson today is about transfer of electron at a distance so basically what does that mean it's just any redox reaction between any reducing agent and any oxidizing agent but then we separate our two reactants by using a salt bridge, okay, in the YouTube. So we have already proven that even though we separated my oxidizing agent from reducing agent, but reaction can still take place. What is the proof? The proof is the needle of your galvanometer deflect. So it shows that, hey, iodide is really donating electron and the chlorine is really gaining from it. So these two are still reacting. Okay, so if you want to practice more when you answer any question in any workbook that regards to this YouTube or transfer of electron at a distance, it's very simple. It's basically you just write the half equation for your oxidation reaction and half equation for your reduction reaction and then everything will work from there. Okay, right? Just a very basic redox reaction but now we do it in the YouTube, okay? So that's all for today's lesson, okay? Thank you so much.